Oh, this is such cramped quarters here. <sighs> Hello again, Internet. This is Olin from what I'm listening to. Today, it is a very foggy yet bright day, and uh, I'm here today to hide from the fog and show you some music that I've been collecting over the last couple weeks. There's no theme to this one, so it's just an assorted amount of stuff. Uh, still very good stuff I'm going to show you, so I'm excited to get things going here. The first album I have here is the Meat Puppets' very first album. Periodically, I've been going back to their second album, which is considered a masterpiece in the punk realm. They were considered to be one of the early pioneers of the cowpunk genre, basically taking uh, punk music and country and fusing it together. Because I liked that album so much, I decided to grab the first one, which I know is vastly different from the second one. This one is a more straight-up hardcore punk record. There's still some elements of their country sound, but for the most part, it's more punk than it is country. I have a reissue here that is 32 songs, and this CD was only five bucks. Even the clerk said that was a steal. It's a pretty cool album, and despite the fact that there's so much stuff on here, it's a very quick listen. Every song is roughly a minute or two long, sometimes even 25 seconds. But regardless, they're a really great band. Pretty much everything they do is awesome, and I'm happy to own this one. <laughs> The next album I have here is Buckethead's Electric Sea. On the Double Up vlog, I talked about how I wanted to get this album, but I could never find a copy that was cheap enough or within my budget. And Amoeba in San Francisco had a copy of this album, and I'd been looking at it for ever, and I just never wanted to spend the money on it. Finally, I decided I really, really want this album. It means so much to me, so I got it. When I first moved to San Francisco, this was a record I was listening to a lot. I was listening to this album a lot when I was learning how the public trans worked around here, and there's actually one song on here, I think it's called Point Doom, where <laughs> I was listening to it when I missed my train and I actually thought I could get to the next stop and I made a break for it. Fortunately, I missed that train because the train is a lot faster than I am. Overall, it's such a great album. Acoustic, down-tempo, ambient goodness. Love this. I'm gonna cherish it forever. <laughs> Next albums actually come in pairs. These are two records by a band called The Fucking Champs. That's actually their name. I've known about this band for quite some time, actually. In fact, they're probably one of the first indie bands I actually got into. I stumbled across them because they did a cover of the Legend of Zelda theme, and I thought their sound was really unique. It was like heavy metal, but not entirely heavy. It was like heavy metal indie rock, which I'd never really heard anything like that before. To this day, I don't think I've ever really heard anything within that realm. I remember going to Amoeba, so it was within the first couple of visits, and actually finding some of their material physically on CD, which at the time, I had no idea it existed. So seeing their physical CDs in a record store meant that Amoeba was definitely a special place. So I picked up these two. This one I've listened to in the past. It's got some great songs on there. The Lodge is probably one of my favorites. Dolores Park is another good one. And this one is actually a collaboration between the fucking champs and Trans Am, which is another old post-rock band. Found this in the dollar section and I wanted to check it out. I'm assuming it's gonna be good. I mean, I, I like everything the fucking champs have put out, so this one should be an interesting listen. And it was only a buck, so worth the investment. Both of these were super cheap, and I'm excited to add them to my collection. While perusing the dollar section, I also grabbed this Teddy Bears album. There's a song on here that has Iggy Pop on it called Punk Rocker, and it's a great track. It's awesome. It's kind of the gist of this whole album. It's slightly punk rock, but it's 
more on the electronic dance side, dance punk, if you will. But there's some other cool stuff on here. Different Sound is another great song. Cobra Style is pretty interesting. The description on here says, the album, a mashup of styles touching from garage punk beats, electro, dance hall, and kraut rock, features a diverse array of guest vocalists, including Iggy Pop and a bunch of other people. Normally, I don't really listen to this style of music, but being that it's summer, I've been wanting to listen to more fun sounding stuff, and this definitely falls in that realm. This is one of those albums that's great for rolling down all your windows on a warm night and blasting it out of your speakers. Pretty cool record. It was only a buck. I like it. The next album I have here is a band called Helen. So believe it or not, Grouper, who I've talked a lot about in these vlogs, was in a shoegaze band at one point. And this is it. Every time I go to the experimental section, I always look and see what Amoeba has for Grouper's discography, and this album happened to be there. I didn't know what it was, but I wanted to know, uh, so I picked it up, and man, was I blown away by this. It's definitely an indie rock record, but when you have Grouper involved in it, she adds these really lovely, ambient, beautiful harmonies to the music. And I don't know much about this band other than the fact that she's involved, but it is definitely a sleeper, and I think it's something worth checking out. If I ever find anything more by these guys, I'm definitely going to pick them up, but this is definitely a record worth checking out. It's called The Original Faces. Oh, it was also released on Cranky, so that's how you know it's great. Next up, I have two albums by a group called Clouded. This group is awesome. They are so good. They are a rap trio, and they dive into ambient experimental realms, which isn't something that you normally hear in rap music. Typically, it's just very straightforward, but their music is so unique. Their first record is actually a compilation album. Back in the 90s, they released a series of 45s that had two songs on each side. This album takes all those 45s and puts them all on one CD. I was listening to this album when I had a fever and I had to go work downtown in San Francisco and when I was trying to get back home this album was playing through my earbuds and I remember just having the hardest time trying to stay awake and stay conscious because I was just so sick. Their music is just like the perfect soundtrack for a fever dream or a fever-induced adventure, which is what this album supplied me with. But despite feeling like shit while listening to it, it's a great record, and the cover alone is also worth noting. The second album here, just called 10, is a follow-up. 10 songs, pretty straightforward, more experimental goodness. I don't think it's better than the first one. I honestly think both of these are equally great. I think it's worth owning both of them if you enjoy one or the other. I actually got this one first, and then after listening to this, I went and bought this one because I just loved it so much. Cannot stress how much these guys are great. Totally worth checking out if you're into ambient music and hip-hop music for that matter. Or the bartenders never pay attention. Show and tell with a gag blindfold. Wrapped around the entire congregation. Constraints. Put another dime in the jukebox, baby. Pocket full of lightning bars. Last thing I have here, this is this is wonderful. This is Roy Montgomery's newest album. I have definitely talked about him in past vlogs, probably in the experimental vlog and other stuff, but this is a four disc album of his amazing guitar work. In fact, actually, I think I saved the legend here. On the packaging, it has a breakdown of what's to expect on each disc. And the first disc, Roy's voice reflects and laments, revealing a baritone sincerity akin to Leonard Cohen, Skip Spence, and Dino Valenti, the gateway for the uninitiated. Then we have other stuff like the most extreme of the four LPs, this is disc two, exploring new approaches to Montgomery's guitar sound, conjures unearthed fuzzed out Joy Division studio experiments, Disc 3 echoes early 80s stylings of 
Cocktoo twins, fogging into a shimmery beauty, extolling the power of a light touch. And finally, the last disc offers sparse commentary on despair and hope, infused with a metaphysical divinity rivaling the climactic glories of Popol Vuh and Slow Dive, this is the transfigurative finale to Headquarters. So if hearing that doesn't make you want to listen to this record, I don't know what does. Roy is such a talented guitarist, his music, everything he does is so good, and I am really excited to own this one. <laughs> Okay, internet, that does it for me. My foot is falling asleep, so I need to go stand up and wake that bitch up. So, uh, if you have any bands or albums that you want me to check out, uh, leave a comment down below. I'll check them out, and if I like it, I might include it in a vlog. But until then, this is Olin from What I'm Listening To, signing out. Goodbye. <laughs>